Hello, thank you for joining me today. Today we are reading from A Course in Miracles, the main text, and we're on chapter 15, The Holy Instant. So this is another long chapter. We'll see uh, how long it is. I expect we'll probably have to break it up into two readings. This is section one of chapter 15, The Holy Instant the two uses of time. Can you imagine what it means to have no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but merely to be perfectly calm and quiet all the time? Yet that is what time is for, to learn just that and nothing more. God's teacher cannot be satisfied with his teaching until it can constitutes all your learning. He has not fulfilled his teaching function until you have become such a consistent learner that you learn only of him. When this has happened, you will no longer need a teacher or time in which to learn. One source of perceived discouragement from which you may suffer is your belief that this takes time and that the results of the Holy Spirit's teaching are far in the future. This is not so. For the Holy Spirit uses time in his own way and is not bound by it. And all the waste that time seems to bring with it due, is due but to your identification with the ego, which uses time to support its belief in destruction. The ego, like the Holy Spirit, uses time to convince you of the inevitability of the goal and end of teaching. To the ego, the goal is death, which is its end. But to the Holy Spirit, the goal is life, which has no end. The ego is an ally of time, but not a friend. For it is as mistrustful of death as it is of life, and what it wants for you, it cannot tolerate. The ego wants you dead, but not itself. The outcome of this strange religion must therefore be the conviction that it can pursue you beyond the grave. And out of its unwillingness for you to find peace even in death, it offers you immortality in hell. It speaks to you of heaven, but assures you that heaven is not for you. How can the guilty hope for heaven? Belief in hell is inescapable to those who identify with the ego. Their nightmares and their fears are all associated with it. The ego teaches that hell is in the future, for this is what all its teaching is directed to. Hell is its goal, for although the ego aims at death and disillusion as an end, it does not believe it. The goal of death, which it craves for you, leaves it unsatisfied. No one who follows the ego's teachings is without the fear of death. Yet if death were thought merely as an end to pain, would it be feared? We've seen this strange paradox in the ego's thought system before, but never so clearly as here. For the ego must seem to keep fear from you to hold your allegiance yet it must engender fear in order to maintain itself. Again, the ego tries and all too frequently succeeds in doing both by using dissociation for holding its con contradictory aims together so that they, can, they seem to be reconciled. The ego teaches thus, death is the end as far as hope of heaven goes. Yet because you and the ego cannot be separated, and because it cannot conceive of its own death, it will pursue you still, because guilt is eternal. Such is the ego's version of immortality. And it is this, the ego's version of, of time. And is, oh, sorry. And it is this ego, this the ego's version of time supports. It's still a difficult sentence. The ego teaches that heaven is here and now because the future is hell. Even when it attacks so savagely that it tries to take the life of someone 
who thinks it is only the voice. It speaks of hell even to him. For it tells him hell is here as well, and bids him leap from hell into oblivion. The only time the ego allows anyone to look upon with equanimity is the past, and even there, its only value is that it is no more. How bleak and despairing is the ego's use of time, and how terrifying. For underneath its fanatical insistence that the past and the future be the same is hidden a far more insidious threat to peace. The ego does not advertise its final threat, for it would have its worshippers still believe that it can offer them escape. But the belief in guilt must lead to the belief in hell, and always does. The only way in which the ego allows the fear of hell to be experienced is to bring hell here, but always as a forestate of the future. For no one considers himself as deserving of hell can believe that punishment will end in peace. The Holy Spirit teaches thus, there is no hell. Hell is only what the ego has made of the present. The belief in hell is what prevents you from understanding the present because you are afraid of it. The Holy Spirit leads as steadily to heaven as the ego drives to hell. For the Holy Spirit, who knows only the present, uses it to undo the fear by which the ego would make the present useless. There is no escape from fear in the ego's use of time. For time, according to its teaching, is nothing but a teaching device for compounding guilt until it becomes all-encompassing, demanding vengeance forever. The Holy Spirit would undo all of this now. Fear is not of the present, but only of past and future, which do not exist. There is no fear in the present, when each instant stands clear and separated from the past, without its shadow reaching out into the future. Each instant is a clean, untarnished birth, in which the Son of God emerges from the past into the present and the present extends forever. It is so beautiful and so clean and free of guilt that nothing but happiness is there. No darkness is remembered, and immortality and joy are now. This lesson takes no time. For what is time without a past and future? It has taken time to misguide you so completely, but it takes no time at all to be what you are. Begin to practice the Holy Spirit's use of time as a teaching aid to happiness and peace. Take this very instant now and think of it as all there is of time. Nothing can reach you here out of the past, and it is here that you are completely absolved, completely free and holy without condemnation. From this holy instant, wherein holiness was born again, you will go forth in time without fear and with no sense of change with time. Time is inconceivable without change, yet holiness does not change. Learn from this instant more than merely what hell does, that hell does not exist. In this redeeming instant lies heaven, and heaven will not change for the birth into the holy present is salvation from change. Change is an illusion taught by those who cannot see themselves as guiltless. There is no change in heaven because there is no change in God. In the holy instant in which you see yourself as bright with freedom, you will remember God. For remembering him is to remember freedom. If you are tempted to be dispirited by thinking how long it would take to change your mind so completely, ask yourself how long is an instant. Could you not give so short a time to the Holy Spirit for your salvation? He asks no more, for he has no need of more. 
It takes far longer to reach you to be willing to give him this than for him to use this tiny instant to offer you the whole of heaven. In exchange for this instant, he stands ready to give you the resemblance of eternity. You will never give this holy instant to the Holy Spirit on behalf of your release, while you are unwilling to give it to your brothers on behalf of theirs. For the instant of holiness is shared and cannot be yours alone. Remember then, when you are tempted to attack a brother, that his instant of release is yours. Miracles are the instants of release you offer and will receive. They attest to your willingness to be released and to offer time to the Holy Spirit for his use of it. How long is an instant? It is as short for your brother as it is for you. Practice giving this blessed instant of freedom to all who are enslaved by time and thus make time their friend for them. The Holy Spirit gives their blessed instant to you through your giving it. As you give it, he offers it to you. Be not unwilling to give what you would receive of him, for you join with him in giving. In the crystal cleanness of the release you give, in the crystal cleanness of the release you give is your instantaneous escape from guilt. You must be holy if you offer holiness. How long is an instant? as long as it takes to reestablish perfect sanity, perfect peace, and perfect love for everyone, for God, and for yourself. As long as it takes to remember immortality and your immortal creations who share it with you. As long as it takes to exchange hell for heaven. Long enough to transcend all of the ego's making and ascend you unto your Father. Time is your friend if you leave it to the Holy Spirit to use. He needs but very little to restore God's whole power to you. He who transcends time for you understands what time is for. Holiness lies not in time but in eternity. There never was an instant in which God's Son could lose his purity. His changeless state is beyond time, for his purity remains forever beyond attack and without variability. Time stands still in his holiness and changes not. And so it is no longer time at all, for caught in the single instant of the eternal sanctity of God's creation, it is transformed into forever Give the eternal instant that eternity may be remembered for you in that shining instant of perfect release. Offer the miracle of the holy instant through the Holy Spirit and leave him giving it you to him. That's uh, a great section uh, time is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, if you've studied any of my work or heard me speak in other places, you've probably heard me say, time is an illusion, it doesn't exist. It's one of the trickiest aspects of this third dimension to understand and to work with. Um, so if you need support, feel free to reach out. Uh, I, I'm happy to discuss time in more detail with you. Moving on to the second section of chapter 15, the holy instant, the end of doubt. The atonement is in time, but not for time. Being in you, it is eternal. What holds resemblance of God cannot be bound by time. No more are you. For unless God is bound, you cannot be. An instant offered to the Holy Spirit is offered to God on your behalf, and in that instant you will awaken gently in him. In the blessed instant you will let go all your past learning. 
and the Holy Spirit will quickly offer you the whole lesson of peace. What can take time then when all the obstacles to learning to it have been removed? Truth is so far beyond time that all of it happens at once. For as it was created one, so its oneness depends not on time at all. Be not concerned with time and fear not the instant of holiness that will remove all fear. For the instant of peace is eternal because it is without fear. It will come, being the lesson God gives you through the teacher he has appointed to translate time into eternity. Blessed is God's teacher whose joy it is to teach God's holy son his holiness. His joy is not contained in time. His teaching is for you because his joy is yours. Through him you stand before God's altar, where he gently translates hell into heaven. For it is only in heaven that God would have you be. How long can it take to be where God would have you? For you are where you have forever been and will forever be. For what you have, you have forever. The blessed instant reaches out to encompass time as God extends his, himself to encompass you. You who have spent days, hours, and even years in chaining your brothers to your ego in an attempt to support it and uphold its weakness, do not perceive the source of strength. In this holy instant, you will unchain all your brothers and refuse to support either their weakness or your own. You do not realize how much you have misused your brothers by seeing them as sources of ego support. As a result, they witness to the ego in your perception and seem to provide reasons for not letting it go. Yet they are far stronger and much more compelling witnesses for the Holy Spirit, and they support his strength. It is therefore your choice whether they support the ego or the Holy Spirit in you. And you will recognize which you have chosen by their reactions. A son of God who has been released through the Holy Spirit in a brother is always recognized. He cannot be denied. If you remain uncertain, it is only because you have not given complete release. And because of this, you have not given a single instant completely to the Holy Spirit. For when you have, you will be sure you have. You will be sure because the witness to him will speak so clearly of him that you will hear and understand. You will doubt until you hear one witness whom you have wholly released through the Holy Spirit. And then you will doubt no more. The holy instant has not yet happened to you, yet it will, and you will recognize it with perfect certainty. No gift of God is recognized in any other way. You can practice the mechanism, the mechanics of the holy instant, and will learn much from doing so. Yet its shining and glittering brilliance, which will literally blind you to this world by its own vision, you cannot supply. And here it is, all in this instant, complete and accomplished and wholly given. Start now to practice your little part in separating out the holy instant. You will receive very specific instructions as you go along. To learn to separate out this single second and to experience it as timeless is to begin your, to experience yourself as not separate. Fear not that you will not be given help in this. God's teacher and his lesson will support your strength. It is only your weakness that will depart from you in this practice, for it is the practice of the power of God in you. Use it but for one instant, and you will never deny it again. Who can deny the presence of that 
of what the universe bows to in appreciation and gladness before the recognition of the universe that witnesses to it your doubts must disappear moving on section three of chapter 15 the holy instant littleness versus magnitude be not content with littleness but be sure you understand what littleness is and why you could never be content with it littleness is the offering you give yourself you offer this in peace of magnitude and you accept it everything in this world is little because it is a world made out of littleness in the strange belief that littleness cannot can, can, cannot can sorry <laughs> let's do that sentence again everything in this world is little because it is a world made out of littleness in the strange belief that littleness can content you when you strive for anything in this world in the belief that it will bring you peace you are belittling yourself and blinding yourself to glory littleness and glory are the choices open to your striving and your vigilance you will always choose one at the expense of the other yet what you do not realize each time you choose is that your choice is your evaluation of yourself choose littleness and you will not have peace for you will have judged yourself unworthy of it and whatever you offer as a substitute is much too poor a gift to satisfy you it is essential that you accept the fact and accept it gladly that there is no form of littleness that can ever content you you are free to try as many as you wish but all you will be doing is to delay your homecoming for you will be content only in magnitude which is your home there is a deep responsibility you owe yourself and one you must learn to remember all the time the lesson may seem hard at first but you will learn to love it when you realize that it is true and is but a tribute to your power you who have sought and found littleness remember this every decision you make stems from what you think you are and represents the value that you put upon yourself believe the little can content you and by limiting yourself you will not be satisfied for your function is not little and it is only by finding your function and fulfilling it that you can escape from littleness there is no doubt about what your function is for the holy spirit knows what it is there is no doubt about its magnitude for it reaches you through him from magnitude you do not have to strive for it because you have it all striving must be directed against littleness for it does require vigilance to protect your magnitude in this world to hold your magnitude in perfect awareness in a world of littleness is a task the little cannot undertake yet it is asked of you alone the power of god will support every effort you make on behalf of his dear son search for the little and you deny yourself his power god is not willing that his son be content with less than everything for he is not content without his son and his son cannot be content with less than his with less than his father has given him I asked you earlier would you be hostage to the ego or host to God let this question be asked you by the Holy Spirit every time you make a decision for every decision you make does this answer and invites sorrow or joy accordingly when God gave himself to you in your creation he established you as host to him forever he has not left you 
and you have not left him. All your attempts to deny his magnitude and make his son hostage to the ego cannot make little whom God has joined with him. Every decision you make is for heaven or hell and brings you the awareness of what you decided for. The Holy Spirit can hold your magnitude clean of all littleness, clearly and in perfect safety in your mind, untouched by every little gift of the world littleness would offer you. But for this, you cannot side against him in what he wills for you. Decide for God through him. For littleness and the belief that you can be content with littleness are decisions you make about yourself. The power and the glory that lie in you from God are for all who, like you, perceive themselves as little and believe that littleness can be blown up into a sense of magnitude that can content them. Neither give littleness nor accept it. All honor is due the host of God. Your littleness deceives you, but your magnitude is of him who dwells in you and in whom you dwell. Touch no one then with littleness in the name of Christ, eternal host unto his Father. Uh, now, this is a, a reference uh, to time, which obviously is not going to match up with where we are in time. So we'll just have to adjust for that. Um, in this season, Christmas, which celebrates the birth of holiness into this world, join with me who decided holy, for holiness for you. It is our task together to restore the awareness of magnitude to the host whom God appointed for himself. It is beyond all your littleness to give the gift of God, but not beyond you. For God would give himself through you. He reaches from you to everyone and beyond everyone to his son's creations, but without leaving you. Far beyond your little world, but still in you, he extends forever. Yet he brings all his extensions to you as host to him. Is it a sacrifice to leave littleness behind and wander not in vain? Is it not, is it not sacrifice to wake to glory? But it is sacrifice to accept anything less than glory. Learn that you must be worthy of the Prince of Peace, born in you in honor of him whose host you are. You know not what love means because you have sought to purchase it with little gifts, thus valuing it too little to understand its magnitude. Love is not little, and love dwells in you for you are host to him. Before the greatness that lives in you, your poor appreciation of yourself and all the little offerings you give slip into nothingness. Holy child of God, when will you learn that only holiness can content you and give you peace? Remember, that you learn not for you alone, no more than I did. It is because I learned for you that you can learn of me. I would but teach you what is yours, so that together we can replace the little shabby littleness that, blind, that binds the host of God to guilt and weakness with the glad awareness of the glory that is in him. My birth in you is your awakening to grandeur. Welcome me not into a manger, but into the altar to holiness, where holiness abides in perfect peace. My kingdom is not of this world, because it is in you, and you are of your Father. Let us join in honoring you, who must remain forever beyond littleness. Decide with me, who has decided to abide with you. 
I will as my father wills, knowing his will is constant and at peace forever with itself. You will be content with nothing but his will. Accept no less, remembering that everything I learned is yours. What my father loves, I love as he does, and I can no more accept it as what is not than he can, and no more can you. When you have learned to accept what you are, you will make no more gifts to offer to yourself, for you will know you are complete, in need of nothing, and unable to accept anything for yourself. But you will gladly give, having received. The host of God needs not seek to find anything. If you are wholly willing to leave salvation to the plan of God and unwilling to attempt to grasp for peace yourself, salvation will be given you. Yet think not that you can substitute your plan for his. Rather join with me in his that we may release all who's, who would be bound, proclaiming together that the Son of God is host to him. Thus will we let no one forget what you would remember, and thus will you remember it. Call forth in everyone only the remembrance of God and of the heaven that is in him. For where you would have your brother be, there will you think you are. Hear not his appeal to hell and littleness, but only his call for heaven and greatness. Forget not that his call is yours, and answer him with me. God's power is forever on the side of his host, for it protects only the peace in which he dwells. Lay not littleness before his holy altar, which rises above the stars and, and reaches even to heaven because of what is given it. So, great stuff. Really great stuff. All right, moving on. The Holy Instant, Section 4, Practicing the Holy Instant. This course is not beyond immediate learning unless you believe that what God wills takes time. And this means only that you would, def would rather delay the recognition that his will is so. The holy instant is this instant and every instant the one you would want it to be. The one you would not have it be is lost to you. You decide when it is. Delay it not. For beyond the past and future where you will not find it, it stands in shimmering readiness for your acceptance. Yet you cannot bring it into glad awareness while you do not want it, for it holds the whole release from littleness. Your practice must therefore rest upon your willingness to let all littleness go. The instant in which magnitude draws upon you is but far away as your desire for it. As long as you desire it not and cherish littleness instead, by so much is it far from you, by so much as you want it will you bring it nearer. Think not that you can find salvation in your own way and have it. Give over every plan you have made for your salvation in exchange for God's. His will content you, and nothing else can bring you peace. For peace is of God, and no one beside him. Be humble before him, yet great in him, and value no plan of the ego before the plan of God. For you leave empty your place in his plan, which you must fill if you would join with me by your decision to join in any plan but his. 
I call you to fulfill your holy part in the plan that he has given to the world for its release from littleness. God would have his host abide in perfect freedom. Every allegiance to a plan of salvation apart from him diminishes the value of his will for you in your own mind. And yet it is your mind that is lost to him. Would you learn how perfect and immaculate is the holy altar on which your father has placed himself? This you will recognize in the holy instant, in which you willingly and gladly give over every plan but his. For there lies peace, perfectly clear because you have been willing to meet its conditions. You can claim the holy instant anytime and anywhere you want it. In your practice, try to give over every plan you have accepted for finding magnitude in littleness. It is not there. Use the holy instant only to recognize that you alone cannot know where it is and can only deceive yourself. I stand within the holy instant as clear as you would have me. And the extent to which you learn to accept me is the measure of time in which the holy instant will be yours. I call to you to make the holy instant yours at once, for the release from littleness in the mind of the host of God depends on willingness and not on time. The reason this course is simple is that truth is simple. Complexity is of the ego and is nothing more than the ego's attempt to obscure the obvious. You could live forever in the holy instant, beginning now and reaching to eternity, but for a very simple reason. Do not obscure the simplicity of this reason, for if you do, it will be only because you prefer not to recognize it and not let it go. The simple reason simply stated is this. The holy instant is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. This means, however, that it is a time in which your mind is open both to receive and give. It is the recognition that all minds are in communication. It therefore seeks to change nothing, but merely to accept everything. How can you do this when you would prefer to have private thoughts and keep them? The only way you could do that would be to deny the perfect communication that makes the holy instant what it is. You believe you can harbor thoughts you would not share, and that salvation lies in keeping thoughts to yourself alone. For in private thoughts known only to yourself, you think you find a way to keep what you would have alone and share what you would share. And when you wonder why it is that you are not in full communication with those around you, Oh, and then you wonder why it is that you are not in full communication with those around you and with God who surrounds you all, who surrounds all of you together. Every thought you would keep hidden shuts communication off because you would have it so. It is impossible to recognize perfect communication while breaking communication holds value to you. Ask yourself honestly, would I want to have perfect communication, and am I wholly willing to let everything that interferes with it go forever? If the answer is no, then the Holy Spirit's readiness to give it to you is not enough to make it yours, for you are not ready to share it with him. And it cannot come into mind that has divided, oh, sorry, and it cannot come into a mind that has decided to oppose it. For the holy instant is given and received with equal willingness, being the acceptance of the single will that governs all thought. The necessary condition for the holy instant does not require that you have no thoughts that are not pure. 
but it does require that you have none that you will keep. Innocence is not of your making. It is given you the instant you would have it. Atonement would not be if there were no need for it. You will not be capable, rather able, to accept perfect communication as long as you would hide it from yourself. For what you would hide is hidden from you. In your practice, then, try only to be vigilant against deception and seek not to protect the thoughts you would keep to yourself. Let the Holy Spirit's purity shine them away and bring all your awareness to the readiness for purity he offers you. Thus, he will make you ready to acknowledge that you are host to God and hostage to no one and to nothing. Okay, I think we'll read one more section and then we'll stop. Um, but let's just grab on to that last little bit. Thus he will make you ready to acknowledge that you are host to God and hostage to no one and to nothing. You are host to God, meaning you, you are God. God is what you are. Your housing is your body, and it is a host to the Spirit of God. You are an individuated aspect of divinity. All right, section five of chapter 15, the holy instant, and section five is the holy instant and special relationships. The holy instant is the Holy Spirit's most useful learning device for teaching you love's meaning. For its purpose is to suspend judgment entirely. Judgment always rests on the past, for past experience is the basis on which you judge. Judgment becomes impossible without the past, for without it you do not understand anything. You would make no attempt to judge because it would be quite apparent to you that you do not understand what anything means. You are afraid of this because you believe that without the ego, all would be chaos. Yet I assure you that without the ego, all would be love. The past is the ego's chief learning device, for it is in the past that you learn to define your own needs and acquired methods for meeting them on your own terms. We have said that to limit love to part of the sonship is to bring guilt into your relationships and thus make them unreal. If you seek to separate out certain aspects of the totality and look to them to meet your imagined needs, you are attempting to use separation to save you. How then could guilt not enter? For separation is the source of guilt, and to appeal to it for salvation is to believe you are alone. To be alone is to be guilty. For to experience yourself as alone is to deny the oneness of the Father and his Son, and thus to attack reality. You cannot love parts of reality and understand what love means. If you would not love if you would love unlike to God, who knows no special love, how can you understand it? To believe that special relationships with special love can offer you salvation is the belief that separation is salvation. For it is the complete equality of the atonement in which salvation lies. How can you decide that special aspects of the sonship give you more than others? The past has taught you this, yet the holy instant teaches you it is not so. Because of guilt, all special relationships have elements of fear in them. This is why they shift and change so frequently. They are not based on changeless love alone. For love, 
rather, and love, where fear has entered, cannot be depended on because it is not perfect. In his function as interpreter of what you made, the Holy Spirit uses special relationships which you have chosen to support the ego as learning experiences that point to the truth. Under his teaching, every relationship becomes a lesson in love. The Holy Spirit knows no one is special, yet he also perceives that you have made special relationships, which he would purify and not let you destroy. However unholy the reason you made them be, he can translate them into holiness by removing as much fear as you will let him. You can place any relationship under his care and be sure that it will not result in pain if you offer him your willingness to have it serve no need but his. All the guilt in it arises from your use of it, all the love from his. Do not then be afraid to let your go your imagined needs, which would destroy the relationship. Your only need is his. Any relationship you would substitute for another has not been offered to the Holy Spirit for his use. There is no substitute for love. If you would attempt to substitute one aspect of love for another, you have placed less value on one and more on the other. You have not only separated them, but you have also judged against both. Yet you had judged against yourself first, or you would never have imagined that you needed your brothers as they were not. Unless you had seen yourself as without love, you could not have judged them so like you in lack. The ego's use of relationships is so fragmented that it frequently goes even further. One part of one aspect suits its purpose, while it prefers different parts of another aspect. Thus does it assemble reality to its own capricious liking, offering for your seeking a picture whose likeness does not exist. For there is nothing in heaven or earth that it resembles, and so however much you seek for its reality, you cannot find it because it is not real. Everyone on earth has formed special relationships, and although this is not so in heaven, the Holy Spirit knows how to bring a touch of heaven to them here. In the holy instant, no one is special, for your personal needs intrude on no one to make your brothers seem different. Without the values from the past, you would see them all the same and like yourself nor would you see any separation between yourself and them. In the holy instant, you see in each relationship what it will be when you perceive only the present. God knows you now. He remembers nothing, having always known you exactly as he knows you now. The instant reflects his knowing by bringing all perception out of the past, thus removing the frame of reference you have built by which to judge your brothers. Once this is gone, the Holy Spirit substitutes his frame of reference for it. His frame of reference is simply God. The Holy Spirit's timelessness lies only here. For in the holy instant, free of the past, you see that love is in you, and you have no need to look without and snatch love guiltily from where you thought it was. All your relationships are blessed in the holy instant, because the blessing is not limited. In the holy instant, the sonship gains as one, and united in your blessing, it welcomes one to you. The meaning of love is the meaning of God. The meaning of love is the meaning God gave it. Give to it any meaning apart from his, and it is impossible to understand it. God loves every brother as he loves you, neither less nor more. He needs them all equally, and so do you. In time, you have been told to offer miracles as I direct, and let the Holy Spirit bring to you those who are seeking you. 
Yet in the holy instant, you, dis you unite directly with God and all your brothers join in Christ. Those who are joined in Christ are in no way separate. For Christ is the self the sonship shares as God shares his self with Christ. Think that you can judge the self of God. God has created you. No, God has created it beyond judgment out of his need to extend his love. With love in you, you have no need except to extend it. In the holy instant, there is no conflict of needs, for there is only one. For the holy instant reaches to eternity and the mind of God. And it is only there love has meaning, and only there it can be understood. Beautiful reading. Beautiful chapter. Uh, so we, uh, we will pick up uh, next Sunday with the rest of chapter 15, which will be sections 6 through 11. Um, and uh, if you need me in the meantime, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003. You can also, uh, and I never met, I always forget to mention, you can visit my website as well, lindalamp.com. Uh, but you can also message me on Facebook and on YouTube where these uh, videos appear. So um, remember, there's no such thing as time. That's one of the biggest things to, uh, to try and understand. And um, I'm happy to help you with that if you would like additional support. So until next week, next chapter, unless you're uh, watching the daily videos, and then I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, until next time. Much love and namaste.